What is drifting? It's described as dancing with a cow, really. Complete control of a cow that should not be doing what it is doing. It's, uh, according to most people, it would be impossible to do, you know? When I was 16, coming up to my 17th birthday, I uh, was obviously excited about getting my first car, like, but didn't know what it was. And I, uh, I wanted a Mac 2 Escort, like my father had done through all the years, but uh, he wasn't very happy with that. So he made the mistake of mentioning to me one day that why wouldn't you buy something like a Corolla Twin Cam? Wouldn't it be a much nicer car for you? And I said, yeah, I probably would, yeah. So I uh, went straight away looking for them and I found one and, and uh, we went to see it and he couldn't find a thing wrong with it. So it was a perfect car and I, I bought it the, the week after. I've been involved in cars since I can remember. So my first car was going to be something sweet, like so. Just happened to be this. How are you? When I was 17, then I used to drive it on the road for about Two years, took it off the road and started building it to uh, what you see it now. It's like everything, you get addicted to it and you have to go a step further and further and further and just get carried away altogether until it gets to a state like this. It's a car costing you 30,000 euro. It's just a stupid amount of money, but over a period of time it all builds up and you do get carried away. Like Completely rebuilt it, complete competition car now. Since then it's got a bit of a hard life, but she loves it. <laughs> You set up the car for the corner as far from the corner as you can on the straight and you get the car to slide into the bend. You get it to slide the whole way around the bend with as much counter steer as you can. Then you've got to get the car to slide out of the bend with as much counter steer as you can as well. It's about the person who can maintain speed, angle and, uh, and the drift for the whole bend. It's not a race, no. you're out on your own in the track and you're judged by the judge and given a score at the end of it. And the top 16 go through and are paired off into twin battles head to head. So it just keeps cancelling down then top eight, top four, and then you, you have the final at the end, you know? It's all about the distance you can keep from the man in front. If, if you can stay absolutely stuck to him, you will be marked up. And then when it's his turn to go behind on the second run, if he doesn't stay as close, he'll be marked down, you know? You could drift perfectly, but if you can keep half a car length from him and if he can only keep two car lengths from you, well, then you win, you know? I started when I was 11, racing a Mini. Basically just jumped into the deep end there and it took me a few years to get a hang of it. But once we won that championship, it took us two or three years, I think. Uh, we moved on to the next and uh, basically just won every championship until I was about 19, where I quitted motorsport racing, actually competition racing, and uh, went in, looked into building a, a drift car for myself. Yeah, we had a bit of a, an accident the last day. We um, had a competitor spun in front of me and I hit him just dead straight on. So um, it got it right in the corner here, just right there, and broke the headlamps and the bumper and bent the chassis right in at the back. It's fairly gutting, right? the minute you hit your opponent, the reaction doesn't kind of set in for about an hour because the adrenaline is going, you're just pumped up and you drive through a stone wall at that stage and you wouldn't really care, but about an hour later, it starts hitting the pocket. You find out how much it's going to cost to put it back together, how much you're after breaking. When you're looking at other people going off, you think, oh, I, w I wish that wasn't me and things like that. But once the helmet goes on, you just, turned into a lunatic altogether and just got hell for leather 100% the whole time. So I actually get uh, given out to by the rest of the family and my pit crew and stuff for going so hard in practice, qualifying the event, driving like tis the final and every time we go out. But that's the only way you'll improve, I think, is if you're really trying very hard. Rose Green has been there from the start. And if there was any kind of event going, it would end up being in Rose Green, you know? even though it might be a small track and limited facilities or whatever, but without Rose Green, there would be no drifting around. It's just simple as that, you know. Let's hear it right the way around. Come on, folks, you can't hear it. There's 
no qualifying today because it was invitation only, because it's an exhibition. So normally in qualifying, there'll be about 40 cars and they qualify down to 16. But uh, there's only 16 invites today, so there's no qualifying, it's straight into the competition. Number 13 is Derek Ford. Derek Ford, number 13. And number 9 is Darren McNamara in the uh, 2 liter turbo powered A86. sliding and you, you're counter steering with opposite lock, you can literally look out the side window of the passenger side. I was looking at the passenger's mirror, you know, when you could blank out the windscreen. I think I'd still make it true, you know, that you're actually sliding that much. I'm up against Mick Dean now, next. He's from just over the road from me. Good friend of mine, so we're trying not to have too much contact. McNamara the go for it. This one is going to be difficult to decide, folks. This is going to be difficult. McNamara's are way down the road. He's got a big, big lead on uh, my team. I can't do uh, attack at that, that distance. Darren has a slight edge because the fact that he oval raced so much. He's used to cars being beside him and being in and out of cars and being under pressure from lads. And it shows when he's out on the track because he, he's just so calm and collected. I have no problem going out on the track with Darren, just 100% committed, flat to that, because I know if I make a small mistake, he has the capability, the knowledge and the know-how to correct himself and his line to allow for my mistake or vice versa. A lot of ground to make up on the track. Come on, let's have a look at him. Can we have you out of the car, guys? Have we got a result, Kieran? Darren McDermott! Yes, folks, give it up to him. It is the only place you can do it really. To start out is on the street, you know. It's starting to be recognised, but it's not recognised as a, a proper sport because there just isn't enough tracks and drifters are kind of frowned upon as they Let's say if a fellow went out and he kept spinning and, and he might spin and do a few donuts and keep going. Like track owners don't like that kind of thing, so they tell you go away. But if they did actually come and see what the proper guys do, they'd be well impressed and, and maybe people will open their gates for people to learn. But until that happens, people are going to do it and on the street.